Welcome to the Spot Real Talk. My name is Tiara. I'm Tiffany. I'm Ron. And today we are here to talk about Atlanta. So we've been, you know, missing a few episodes uh, doing our recaps, but today we are coming here to discuss uh, season four, episode eight, and then we'll go back. So we'll do eight, seven, six, and five today. And we're going to start in reverse order with the most recent. Um, so you guys are in for a treat because there has definitely been a lot of episodes that are ruffling feather, <laughs> feathers. Um, so I'm excited to talk about this. Okay, so um, to start our conversation off, like I said, we're doing season four, episode eight first. And this one was titled, The Goof Who Sat By The Door. Um, and talking about ruffling feathers. So this seemed to have been some commentary on Disney as a network. Um, and <laughs> it the disclaimer at the beginning kind of stated that it might ruffle some feathers <laughs> pretty much. And then um, we go into this documentary style format where they're taking an in-depth look at um, the making of the American movie classic, uh, a goofy movie, which was one of my childhood favorites. I used to love that movie. So um, I, I really thought that it was real at first too. They got me because, yeah, yeah. and I should have known when I seen that uh, Black America Network band, uh, yeah. the, the network that was doing it because a few seasons ago, they were the one that did that documentary on the boy that was transracial. Mm -hmm. so and it was like a spoof so I should have known when I seen that they was about to do some shenanigans <laughs> I thought I thought it would be a parody or a take on the book the spook who sat by the door by saying it, 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 so, it, well, it is in some respects I guess but I, I thought it would more or less run that route rather than the Disney um goofy 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 movie because they that's one that they they kind of I guess they're, they're they're pretty much I guess they're similar in respects so, in terms of you know trying to change things from the inside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. That's what I was going to say. Yeah, that, that makes know, sense. That those makes that have seen the spook sat by the door. That's what he did. He that climbed was, the ranks. Right, right. And, and then he infiltrated from inside, and right. that's basically what Thomas did. Goofy. Right, and that's what. Yeah. But that's why, because when I first started watching it, and even my wife said, "Is this Atlanta?" Because <laughs> I'm thinking, are we watching a real, uh, you know, a documentary or something? You know, I think we all did. I, I was too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know how they do those one-off episodes, so you be yeah. like, "Is this Atlanta or not?" Did no, I switch Glover, channels accidentally? Donald Glover is amazing. I, I, it's it's just he's just amazing. That's all I can say. It, there's no other adjective I could put up behind him. He's just amazing. Mm -hmm. Even when they're not when they're not in it, the all the episodes, the seasons have an undercurrent of, you know, racism. Yep. And, and you know, because they were talking about some real life events like the Rodney King situation, I was sitting up here like, okay, is did this really happen or not? Yeah. And like the more you kept watching, the more kind of ridiculous it got. And yeah. I was like, okay, they playing. <laughs> because at first I'm like, am I that dumb? As to what, because <laughs> you know, I started to question my own intelligence, and I'm like, okay, maybe I need to go back in school because I'm I'm missing something. <laughs> and then they even had real people in it, like Brian yeah. McKnight and Brian? Sinbad and stuff. And so I'm like, they really oh. play, they yeah. play all day on this show. <laughs> they me. do. I'm a sucker. They got me. <laughs> yep. And so um, I guess like. What I took away from this episode is I was thinking about like how there's this talented black creative and he's trying to break into the industry, which is obviously kind of white male dominated. And so just the trials and tribulations you have to go through to get your, um, your idea come to fruition. Mm -hmm. And so um, with Thomas, his character, he wanted to make like the most black movie ever. And I thought that this was kind of maybe um, a take on how Donald Glover feels as a creator where he, with Atlanta, this is a super black show. So I wonder if, that, you know, there's that parallel between he and Thomas in terms of their creative struggle um, mm -hmm. in the, you know, uh, entertainment industry to get their projects come to life. It has to be because mm -hmm. that's something Donald would do anyways. And, <laughs> you know, and it was just, 
I mean, watching it, I, I couldn't take my eyes off it because it's like, what's next? What are you, what else are you, going? you know, between laughing and trying to figure out, is this thing real? I'm like, okay, it can't be real because I'm laughing too hard. So, <laughs> <laughs> Especially when they showed, it, it wasn't funny, but Thomas Carr had obviously been found in the river, but all you see are those big goofy gloves and the shoes. Right. <laughs> and right. I, was, I was like, this should not be funny, but it's hilarious that they did that. <laughs> I was on the floor. I mean, I was on the floor. But yeah, it well done, well done from the dot from the interviews. I mean, everything was just so amazingly done. And when you said white, well, how'd you how'd you put Disney was white oriented? I think you said. Uh, I said like white male dominated. You yeah. know, it's the yeah. most industries. Yeah, the C suite, the yeah. C suite. <laughs> I mean, because it's it's white saturated all day long. It's it's as white as you can get. I mean, Clorox couldn't get it anywhere. Yeah. And there was some commentary on even um, how the Goofy character came about and how it was very racist in its creation from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, because Goofy is a dog, but you right. know, he was supposed to be representative of kind of black people. He was had this stereotype of being lazy and being stupid and kind of you know absent minded. Yeah. Mm -hmm, being and so, um, and slow with it, they slow with it, and right. they showed him eating a watermelon and mm -hmm. all of that. It was like a whole lot of little. But you know, it's funny because as a kid, when I'm when I was watching it or watched a lot of that, I never got that feeling. Oh yeah, as mm -hmm. kids, we don't. Yeah, right. It's and, not and until you're an adult, and you're like, wait a minute. Right. That's why when he brought it together like that, I mean, you know a bell went off and said, wow, is this what I was watching? You know, because mm -hmm. it made a lot of sense. And so I really had a come to Jesus moment with this whole thing because I'm like, wow, I had no idea as a child, you know, what this was really parroting off of. So it was mimicking us. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad that uh, this episode brought that out. If Luanda was here, she would give us a whole spiel on that. Right? <laughs> um, but, you know, it's true, though, because um, and it, it, it's interesting that Thomas, like, chose to fully lean into that, too, mm -hmm. um, knowing, you know, its origins of that goofy character and then deciding that he would wanted to embody that. It really kind of destroyed his life because he had a stable marriage a happy home nice family nice kids everything and then to become a ceo and be at the upper echelon of that company um he kind of did some self-sabotage at the end right. there. he was so dead set on getting this film to be so uh black that he started kind of doing outlandish things as a ceo you know he he was being real black up in the hair oh he got doing, black uh, the little pose on top of the table right. and stuff and i was like he is off the hook he <laughs> you got know, real was, black quick mm -hmm. and then you know what they talked about they kind of incorporated some things in the goofy movie because um the premise of the story is goofy and his son max are taking this road trip um and they kind of talked about how the road trip in the goofy movie um, the map that was used was supposed to be uh, representative of the of the Green Book that was used right. in the Jim Crow era, right. and I wasn't sure how true that was, but it was a good parallel because I was like, oh, okay, well, if if that is to draw on Black history, then that would be a good comparison. Um, and then even talking about how um, the Goofy movie it aimed to not be. Um, during the 90s, they were talking about how Black men were either hyper-feminine or hyper-masculine, but there was no representation of like the average Black man striving to take care of his son and be a good father. And so that's what the movie was for. So I was all here for that. Mm -hmm. yeah, but now it just has me so, it has me wonder what's real and what's not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, that was also during the era, briefly, with Bill Cosby. So you had a little bit of Bill Cosby but I do agree that in that era, we had this infiltration of the softness of black men. And, you know, I, in fact, on both shows that they represented, I, I didn't like, I didn't like them then. I don't like them now, you know, um, you know. Who was that, in Living Color? The Living Color, that, that, that skit that I they- I think that was that skit, yeah. Yeah, was that, that they, particular yeah. skit. And I, I didn't care for it then. And, you know, it kind of embarrassed me when I saw it again 
uh, in Donald Glover's piece, but hey, it is what it is. And it, it has no reflection on what your proclivity well, all is. All of them in color wasn't like that. No, no, it wasn't. I know, but you know, it, it tends to, we tend to get, unfortunately in Hollywood, when we make fun of ourselves, mm -hmm. no, the more we do it, the and more- And we go farther. <laughs> Right, right. We, yeah, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Especially with it, I mean, sometimes it seems like there's infatuation with with that, especially with with the black male, you exactly. know, exactly. Uh, making them more feminine and and everything right. like that. Yeah, right. It, it 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 wants to emasculate us. It wants to put us in skirts all the time. And I guess that's why so many people have some so much problems. So many problems with Tyler Perry, mm -hmm. you know, because we 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 we've been emasculated in that realm for so long and you know it's but well, that's another horse of another, mm -hmm. another day yeah and I, I thought that it also touched well on um the conversation of how uh you, you create something to be one way and then you know after people inject their edits into it it's something completely different mm -hmm. and so of course thomas was ousted from the company for being so pro-black but when he went back and actually seen the film after they had made their changes and they had that Bigfoot character in there, he felt like it was a slap in the face because mm -hmm. he felt like, you know, his version of a, a pro-Black positivity film had changed and they injected that that bogus Bigfoot character in there. He kind of felt like they were saying, like, your pro-Black idea is as bogus as Bigfoot. It's, it's, it's fiction, right. Yeah. Right. You, you know what was it's, interesting? Oh, I'm sorry. No, go um, ahead. I was going to say the the counterpoints, like when, um, you know, Thomas's friend was talking about his dismissal and, and everything. He was like, yeah, they paid him 75000 to get a, get away. And then you 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 um, skip to the white man at the company. He's like, no, they paid him $75 million right. to get away. So, I'm, so I'm like, so what's the truth? Right. So 75000 right. is probably the truth, you know? Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, you know, he comes up missing and mm -hmm. they can't find his body. All they found was his car. So it's like, you know, <laughs> it's a lot being, um, I guess, a, a Black creator who is, you know, uh, emphatically trying to get something positive done and put out there. And so the only thing I can really conclude about this episode is this must be a commentary on how Donald Glover must have felt trying to create his stuff <laughs> because I can't imagine the pushback he probably got from some of these episodes, particularly last season. I mean, they they took it there and they, they really continue did. to. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, and we, you know, we kind of talk about uh, the channel itself, FX, and how it might have some, you know, a little whitewashing more so than uh, uh, Disney owned, owned right, too. because it's Disney owned. How he sold this package for season four is incredible. I, I, mean, I would love to know. I would love to interview Donald Glover here and find out just <laughs> how that happened. I, I mean, because that's a story that needs to be told in and of itself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, Tiffany, so, you might you guys have any, work. Uh, you got some work to do. <laughs> <laughs> Pressure is on. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, um, to close out episode eight, do you guys have anything else you want to add before we move on? Mm -mm. No, no. I think we kind of stated it all. That one was a well done episode, even though I was thrown off a bit at first. Um, oh, I, you weren't the only one. <laughs> <laughs> just online, just the feedback I read. A lot of people were thrown off. Mm -hmm. Um. So on to episode seven. That one was titled Snipe Punt. Mm -hmm. And that episode made me really happy. Um, it did, me too. <laughs> me too. I think that we had all been hoping that we would see um, Earn and Van kind of re resolve things and get back together. Mm -hmm. And so they are on this camping trip for Lottie's birthday. Um, and it seems like Earn is really more so trying to go glamping because he had, you know, this decked out tent that he wanted to put together. That sleeps 12. I mean, yeah, and it's only three of them. <laughs> only three of them. <laughs> that um, thing was lopsided though. When they put it, together. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it didn't sleep 12 after he put it together. It was more like two. 
But and you know, I thought that the episode might have took a turn too because it seemed like it had like some racial undertones at the beginning. You know, black people going camping is not always a commonplace thing, and then they're going with this. Uh, it seemed like in the a whiter part of the woods, and I was like, oh, I hope don't nothing go wrong with them. I was thinking the same thing. But, yeah, but, so it didn't happen though, luckily. But you know, the, the one thing that really disturbed me behind it. How um, Ern and Van just let the little daughter just wander right. a little bit. I mean, you know, because the whole point, I'm waiting for something to happen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know, and 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 I'm like, okay, is is this what's is, is this what we're actually seeing from from Mr. Glover here? So you know, because my heart was on the little girl. I'm like, okay, y'all need to do better watching her because you are in the woods. And, you know, that point when she went next uh, close to the uh, water and they were at least a couple hundred feet away, you know, I'm starting to think, OK, what, alligator? Something's going to grab her. You know, I don't know. <laughs> I hope not in Atlanta. I think, I think they were still in Georgia. Uh, I don't know where they were, but I can tell you what, you don't want to be around too many creeks. It's got all kind of crap in there. Right, right. You know, mm -hmm. the thing that, that got me... Um, I think it was nice that they were trying to do something as a family, but Lottie did not really seem like she was really into it. Like she, that might not have been her idea of fun for turning six years old. So I was wondering, like she was kind of in a um a mood. A funk. Anyway. Yeah, and she was in a funk. And she even said when they put the tent up, she was just like, "Oh, he can sleep outside." I was right. like, "Oh, wait a minute." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and she was kind of talking about how she wished her grandparents were there to spend time with her, and she didn't seem like she, she didn't want to sing the birthday song. So it was kind of like she was just really in a mood. And I think that um, you know, I don't I don't think we've seen them together as a family in a long time. Very long time. And so it might have been a little awkward for her. And on top of that, maybe not wanting to do camping for her birthday. So it was it was interesting um, to see how Lottie reacted. Well, I got the impression it really wasn't for Lottie, that it was more for her and her. Because yes. you, know, you don't take a six-year-old camping when you talk about, you know, having a birthday party with cake and, fan and friends. You know, that's not, I mean... Camping is fine, but not on her sixth birthday. And it's just That's what I, was thinking. I think you're absolutely right, Ron. I think Ern said, you know, set it in a place where they could be alone together. No distractions. You can't run away from this. Right. Because exactly. every time he would ask a van about moving to L.A., she kept trying to divert the conversation somewhere else. Right. And so, you know, being out there in that setting, I think it served his purpose because... Yeah. He yeah. definitely was able to have a talk with her. And then, um, so the snipe hunt. So the, that whole thing, uh, Van introduced it as uh, when she was a Girl Scout as a little girl, um, there was like a red snake-like creature that she learned about um, as a Girl Scout. And so they were trying to catch it. And so some people were thinking about the interpretation of what they thought the snipe was. So did you guys have any thoughts on that? Because, you know, Lottie did catch something. And when Ern went to check it out, it scared the hell out of him. Right. I, <laughs> and me I too. Right. <laughs> that, that, I was like, who was that? That snipe story, I think, was a fairy tale of sorts. Uh, but when she caught something, and even that quick glimpse at it, as it went away was something a little, I don't know it's what. Like a, it's like a rodent. Or yeah, something. yeah, or something. Yeah, because it, it wasn't a snake. And no, it was like it looked like a rodent. I mean, the way it like kind of scampered away. Yeah, and we got that mm -hmm. profile view of it. So I don't know what it was, but again, that was one of Lottie's my brave. I'll say that. Hey. Yeah, well, some she people is. said that the snipe was kind of um it was a sim symbolic thing. They yeah. were thinking maybe like Ern was the snipe, like his emotions and his love for Van. Because they were saying it only comes out at night and, you know, it has red eyes, you know, probably representative of Ern crying. And <laughs> only the right. coolest and the smartest can catch it. And so in the tent, when Ern and Van had that conversation, he admitted to her that, like, she's all he's ever wanted. He, she's like his dream girl. Um, and obviously, was... you know, they have a, a long history. Well, it could and be. So... I'm sorry. 
I was gonna say the snipe could have been representative of that love that has been so elusive for them. It could have been Van. That snipe could have been, uh, you know, a depiction of, of of Van and and Lonnie being Ern finally in a position to capture her in the fashion that which we were talking about, you know, from the beginning. And in, in, in fact, of having this whole camping thing, mm -hmm. whatever it was, it was just interesting that um, and funny, funny as heck when she caught something and then they're looking at each other going, what the heck does she catch? Mm -hmm. yeah, but I, I thought that. it was, I thought it was interesting. I think it demonstrated their different backgrounds too, because, you know, um, Van talked about when she was a Girl Scout. Mm -hmm. And, you know, of course, um, um, Earn grew up differently, you know, because um, they're from different socioeconomic backgrounds. We, we, as we saw in previous seasons, you know, she was celebrating Juneteenth. You know, I think her um, you her family is probably more upper middle class. And then, mm -hmm. so the, you can see when during that conversation, they had different backgrounds. And then number two, you know, I didn't realize until this episode that Van thought that he only loved her as Lottie's mom. Lottie's mom. Like that she didn't really think that he loved her just for her. So it was interesting to hear her say that. And mm -hmm. I was so happy to hear him reassure her. Yes, it was really beautiful. Um, and also, you know, she was worried that going to LA, she going along with him would be like her being his security blanket. And so she was really concerned about that. Like, don't just use me for safety, you know, because I feel safe for you. Like, actually want to be with me. So it was just a really beautiful way because I don't think we often get to see men really profess their love for their women like that. Well, um, I, and he was very delicate and kind of tender with her. And so it was a really sweet moment. What I got from it, well, first of all, Van was only a Girl Scout for a week, so she didn't learn much of anything. <laughs> now. But, but, you know, um, what I saw in Ern is that a kind of confusion because... I don't ever recall Ern giving her that, you know, that um, that thought in terms of how he treated her. He's always wanted her to be around, you know, so I kind of put myself in Ern's spot. You know, I would have been the same way because my thought would be, why would you think that? And if I'm not mistaken, I think he asked that, you know, mm -hmm. um, I, I to be honest, I thought Van was being a little standoffish. A little pushback. Well, I think she was being guarded because she didn't want to get her feelings hurt. Well, th that that it turns out that way. But my question is, why did she feel that way to begin with? Because I'll tell you why. Because in the very beginning, Earn did not have a, a lot of money. Remember, he dropped out of school and stuff, right. and he really didn't have a place to stay. And in the beginning of the series. He was staying with her. Van was the one that was more responsible, and she had the place in the baby, and she held him down. So, right. so that's why she made the comment that Tierra said about like I don't want to go to L.A. and just be your security blanket because that would be the same role that she kind of played in in the beginning of the series. Now yeah. the tides have turned though because he's come up now. Correct. He has Good his point. own money. But look, look at what you're saying though because. While she was holding it down, she felt a certain kind of way about that. And now that he's come up and he's making his own money, he's doing well, now she feels like he's excluding her. So there's a there's a problem in the way Van thinks because you were kind of torn up or worn down when he didn't when did she have say excluding her though. Huh? When did she say that she thought he was excluding her though? excluding her in the sense I mean, of exclude, I mean when did she say that I, I don't say it. That, that was my impression with her as I said she felt to me a little standoffish and then when she said something like I don't want to be your security blanket I don't ever recall Earn giving her that idea and not not to mention if I were going to LA you know and I got my girl and my my, my daughter I think I'd want them to be with me too and that's all he was really saying is I want you to come with me you know, yeah, but she but she wanted to hear what he said. She wanted he said, I, I love she you wanted, for you. She yeah, wanted yeah. to know that you don't just love me because I'm Lottie's mom. She wanted she did not want to be that. And that's what she was that's what she meant when she was talking about the security but Like, I don't want to just be, you know, 
you you're just here for me just because of the child. I mm -hmm. want you to love me for I'm me. Just, right. Yeah. yeah. And if I want to pick up and move cross country with you, yeah. like I don't want to just be you know, I, the baby mama. I'm trying like is this either we that, on or we off? But has, right. has but but has has uh Ern ever given her that impression? That's my point. They See, were my well, they were Amsterdam. He was sleeping I mean, around but, in Amsterdam, and they yeah, kind of were doing their own things. They were doing their own things, but I, I can't say that it was Ern's fault. I can't say that it was. It's nobody's fault. Exactly. Right. So, so my my whole point was they were finding themselves, mm -hmm. and you know, it 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 just seemed to be a little, a little turt for me, uh, for her to come off on that level. Ask the question, sure, but I didn't. In, in all of the episodes, I don't ever recall Ern dissing her in any way, shape, or form. I don't so think it's a why. diss, though. I it's think not like about since this. they've been it's... apart and since Ern has leveled up in life, it's kind of like her feeling him out. Like, cause are you still the same person I knew and loved from before? Or has this money and success changed you? But has and so, ever, like, has they, he ever shown that? Though? each other as adults now. Correct. But has he ever shown that it has? So my point being is, is your question mute? Is it a moot, right, not mute, is it a moot point? Is your question a moot His point? His lifestyle is different, though. You, you uh, saw and, how, and the security, you saw too. It I should be different. He insecurity he's got, that has nothing uh, to do with it. There's the word insecurity. Those are her own insecurities that she right. was right. Not necessarily so. something earned, uh, 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 you know, somehow came across. And that's right. the point. My whole point. I think she just wanted to be reassured that, you know. Exactly, question, like most women. Right. Ask the question. Yeah. Fine, you know, and but, but why do we always have to ask the question? Why can't you do what he said? He could have said, "Hey, but Jesse, Tip, Tip, the whole point that he wanted to get her out there and get her uh, away from everything is saying something. So everything that he did was saying something. It's not that she had Sometimes that. Sometimes we need for y'all to speak up and use your words. I mean oh, that yeah. is that is yeah. that is saying it is saying something, but yeah. they're. Does before somebody moves across country, they would like to have some clarity about where we stay. Like, like, are we? I'm gonna go to go across country to California so that you can, so just so I can be close by and we can co-parent, or are am I moving to California and we're gonna be a family? I don't. Right. I I don't I don't disagree with her asking. I'm just simply saying. You know, it it to me felt like she was dealing with her own personal insecurities. Yeah, and and in so in some ways, yes. And and she and, has mental health issues. We we mm -hmm. saw that she had a mental break in last right. season. Right. So it's a whole lot of stuff she dealt with. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So when we look at it, as far as I'm concerned, Ern did everything possible to make her feel comfortable. He yes. brought her out there. He wanted to talk to her. In fact, if you recall, he kept trying to talk to her. And, mm -hmm. you know, she was she was coming at it a little slowly until she finally came around to ask the questions that she wanted uh, answered. So I don't think that he was being male, you know, not not wanting to communicate, you know, or not being able to communicate his true feelings. Because as far as I'm concerned, Ern has always been able to communicate his feelings. Well, I, and I don't uh, think nobody's that arguing that point. I nobody's think Ern did a terrific job this episode. Right. I don't, yeah. I, I was proud of how he stepped up mm -hmm. and said what he needed to say. So okay. his communication right. was not an issue for me. I mean, you know. Yeah. Well, you it, said you, you said sometimes men just need to say what's what I, I do say that. I, yeah, as as a whole, sometimes you guys do need to use your words. But I, I feel, and he did use his words. Okay. He did mm -hmm. use his words. But I, I do feel yeah. like that, I'm you know, I'm just saying that, you know, sometimes women, we want, you know, we hey, want security. Yes. We want security. We want to be reassured. And before she moved across country, I think she wanted to be assured that she wasn't just going to, you just want me close so you can be close to the baby. Which is good, but what are we doing? Right. Okay. I'm gonna tell you right now, as a man, I am not gonna drag your behind three thousand miles away unless I want you. Okay. Well, some men will. Well, if, but I, some, I, some I, will you know, if they want to be close to the child. Right. Like that's what you know. Some some people do that. Like they they live close to the um to the um the partner, and it may not be a partner, but they live close enough. So they can be involved in the children's lives, mm -hmm. Which and, makes and sense. a lot of people, a lot of people do that. Yeah, right. but we're not in relationships. I'm just and I don't want to drag this too far because we still got right. two more episodes. I know. To I know. Right. So I, 
I digress. I'm not gonna win this anyway, so I'm I'm good. <laughs> no, no, you you made solid points. Okay. You made solid points. Right. Yeah, but I think episode seven was really good. I think we all got what we wanted out of that, which was to see Aaron and Van get back together. So mm -hmm. looking forward to you seeing what's next with them. You see how Lottie was smiling in the back? Lottie was well, happy. Funny mm -hmm. thing is, I was saying that could have been the end of the series for me. That could no. I, I mean, in terms of the finality of them actually coming together, mm -hmm. being a family, I'm like, that would have been a good way to end the series. But we know Donald Glover got something else up his sleeve. But there's only a couple of episodes left, so yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. See what All right, mean. so let's move and talk about episode six, the crank that killer. <laughs> that episode. I was I was, me too. Oh man, that's so funny. Oh, so man. the guys start this episode off, they're discussing, you know, streaming and how it has changed everything. Everybody's cutting the cord and how, you know, people really get their news from social media, Twitter, the shade room. Um, and so that's how uh, Earn, he mentions this article that he's read about the crank that killer. And mm -hmm. so basically he is, there's this killer going around and, and uh, killing people or attacking them for if they had ever made a video to that viral crank that uh, dance that Soldier Boy came out with, uh, what was it, like 2006? Yeah, <laughs> and, was and so Al realizes that he made a video back in the day to the crank that song. Mm -hmm. And so he's trying to find ways to get, <laughs> earn the scrub it from the internet. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it just it's not happening and then you know on the flip side you have Earn trying to get these new shoes these Nike miracles but they're sold out and so um <laughs> you know there's also this new character that we see and he's a, a rapper some guy named Doug mm -hmm. he's trying to work with a uh, paper boy and collaborate but I was kind of like really not feeling him. He purposely, you know, pours a drink on the equipment so that they can't record together. <laughs> and so he was uh, whack. Yeah, they, he was they, whack. They and may then, be uh, whack. As I was leaving the studio, he sees a comment under his crank that video that has like that little death emoji. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so he's worried. <laughs> Well, you know what? It's also uh, what goes around kind of comes around too. Because while while you know, dude was whack, didn't have any kind of rap skills, and you're gonna ruin your equipment just so that you can't cut in cut anything with him. But see, you find in the end that you need bro man. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> he had to work with him anyway. Had to work with him anyway. So you know, sometimes you just go ahead and cut your loss and go ahead. And well, did it. you? But he didn't really say that on the song. Because did no, you hear he, the song? Because first of all, the dude's bars are whack. But all you heard, baby, he was like, mm, yeah. <laughs> 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 so he didn't really, he didn't really add nothing. No, on it. I guess he, he said, I ain't gonna do too much to ruin my career, <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> and so, you know, it was just really a funny episode because as we're going through it, you can see I was really worried. And um, I thought that this episode was kind of like commentary on how things that you post on social media can come back to haunt you. Thank you. And, you know, and this was a parody on that, obviously, and a super, um, I guess, extreme take on that, you know, actually having somebody coming after you to kill you for something you did on the internet, but it's true, especially with like how people on the internet are so uh, extreme and there's a lot of, you know, one-offs that people kind of take it to the max. I thought that this was some good commentary on what we've been seeing a lot in the news lately. Well, yeah, I mean, even more recent here with uh, Pelosi and her, and her husband. Mm, you know, yeah. Some freak who decides to, you know, take it upon himself to you know injure mm -hmm. you, know, you know nancy well you know what two points about the um the situation with paper boy the guy that was after him was somebody from his his past, his past so right. they mm -hmm. had a previous beef yeah. and so that's why he was worried um about dude you know and he posted it and stuff the dude that was after him so the other thing that made me think is that once the dude located him at the mall and then all these other folks pulled out their guns and was shooting back and stuff. Hey. It, I was like, that was a statement too because mm -hmm. there was, you know, I was it last year or whatever when there was a, a, a shooter that shot at the mall 
and it was a civilian because it was in a, a right to carry state. And that person was the one that actually took the shooter down and not the cops. And so I thought that this episode was also speaking to that because there's mm -hmm. a lot of commentary, you know, from both sides of the aisle, whether it's gun control or or the other side that's like, listen, everybody should wear carry guns because if, if we have a gun, they can stop the shooter. So this episode definitely spoke to that. Yes. That really speaks to the fact that how we're getting, we're going back to how we began, the wild, wild west. Because that's what I thought. Because Maryland, the state of Maryland now has a right to carry state. You can mm -hmm. now go and- uh, uh, Virginia has a right to carry too. Virginia and Maryland just joined. So, you know, which is really crazy because Maryland was a lot like DC in the, in terms of the, that, that, that law. So now you got Maryland and, and Virginia. And I can tell you right now, if DC comes up with it- mm -hmm. that, That's why I said this episode was speaking to that yeah it looked like it looked like the okay corral in there once everybody exactly. starts shooting wild wild west i mean so but then the 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 family thing kind of got me too because that was so typical of families you know um the uh sister wanting to uh uh take the the father, oh, the father? yeah yeah me and Tierra talked about that yeah <laughs> so, I mean, yeah that was funny hmm. as i say it's always something with the family yeah <laughs> I thought that this episode too was some commentary um, on, you know, those hype beasts for the shoes and stuff. Oh, and yeah. how far people will go to get those sneakers and stuff. Because you've seen the scene with uh, Ern and um, Darius going right. to meet this guy in the parking lot in his van. And any other time you would be like, okay, a guy sitting in the van at the mall just sitting there selling shoes. It's, it's kind of like Okay, everybody knows the stereotype of vans. It's always some creep <laughs> that's like just sitting out there selling stuff. And so, why, why would they, he they, want? Well, for me, I'd be like, dude, why you want me to kiss my bro like that? I mean, I, 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 I thought he was going to record them. I that's what I thought. I thought he was going recording and and put them on online. And yeah. they had Casey and JoJo playing in the background <laughs> trying to set. I the scene. had them shoes. I I just would have had them. It's out. <laughs> right. And Ern was gonna make Ern try to what never mind. Mm -mm. Ern tried to reason with Darius, but he was dead set on getting those shoes. Mm -hmm. And so I was just you. like, you know, a lot, a lot of people that are really into sneaker culture, they will do close to anything to mm -hmm. get stuff like that. So I can't put it on layaway, go away. Mm -mm. <laughs> right. I mean, and I and I like sneakers too. I think I'm Kind of sort of sneak ahead, but I, I still, that's too far for me. Way, mm -hmm. way out there. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, that episode was really funny. I enjoyed it. Um, and I think that Al is starting to get to a place where he's really frustrated with the music industry. Um, and I, I'm wondering if by the end of this uh, series, if he is even still in it. I'm telling you, when I watched the episode, it made me think about that Freddie Gibbs movie, and that movie was about that. They, he's a, he's a rapper, and in the movie, he goes up to like the um, the mountains and stuff, and he's just kind of isolated, and he's kind of done mm -hmm. with the uh, with the uh, music industry. And he's but he went up there to contemplate whether he was going to stay in it or not. And at the end, I, you're not even sure if he's going to if he's made up his mind or not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so yeah. I feel like that's where they're kind of heading with um with Paperboy too. Mm -hmm. So as we we've seen Ern's frustration with the entertainment industry. Now we're seeing Paperboy's frustration with the music industry. So I'm like, they really might just say F it, roll mm -hmm. out by the end of this. So mm -hmm. we'll see. Okay. Um, and speaking of the entertainment industry, moving on to season four, episode five, uh, titled Work Ethic. So Van is going. <laughs> to uh to an audition and as soon as i seen her rolling up to the studio and that billboard with the girl asking mr chocolate to hire her i was like oh they talk about tyler perry right. <laughs> <laughs> and i wasn't sure how much he was going to be involved in the episode in terms of like commentary on him but when i seen that billboard i know that that happened in real life where a girl solicited a, a job from Tyler Perry through a billboard in Atlanta. And she actually and ended she up got getting it. a job. Got it. 
And so, you know, Van rolls up to the studio and the whole day is kind of like a whirlwind of nonsense. Um, she's taking Lottie in with her, not to be a, a act, in an acting role, but somehow Lottie ends up stealing the show. <laughs> As kids do, but it, more importantly, again, um, it was that that separation of parent and child that really bothered me too. Um, because, you know, I can only imagine how Van must have felt when you can't keep up with your child, you know, and, and studios like that, they're huge. They're, you know, we're, we're, we're talking about, I don't know, maybe a quarter mile of, of footage. I mean, of, of square feet that you got to, you know, from one stage, one studio to the next, and you're trying to find where your child is. Mm -hmm. You got I, Mr. Chocolate. That <laughs> I, I thought the commentary on Mr. Chocolate was hilarious. First of all, from the billboard, but then you see Van getting ready to go in for hair and makeup. She's walking the hallways, and they have all the movie posters that are kind of like spoofs of Tyler Perry movies. Mm -hmm. And so they had the family that strays. That's kind of like a play on the family that prays. Praise, huh? And they had single father, which is supposed to be daddy's little girl. Little girl. <laughs> and Mr. Go-Getter, which is supposed to be Mr. D. Right. And so uh, they had another one, nobody can tell me what to do too, which is mm -hmm. why did I get why married? I get married. <laughs> and, so, uh, and then they had another one, uh, Jealous-esque which was supposed to be uh, acrimony. <laughs> so uh, it, it was just hilarious to see all of those different spoofs. And then as you kind of get to learn about how everybody interacts with Mr. Chocolate, it's always over intercom. Mm -hmm. Nobody really sees him. He's kind of locked away up in his private building. <laughs> and he's ordering people to do things and kind of like interrupting things as he pleases. <laughs> Yeah, we'll fix and, it. You know, we'll it's kind of, it. he said basically like, I am God. <laughs> well, he gave that God complex. I mean, few words were spoken from him, you know, and every time that he would change a scene and they were like, you know, this isn't in the, you know, in the uh, 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 pre, uh, pre uh, uh, scene. And he said, that's okay. We'll fix it in post. <laughs> you know, and everything can't be fixed in post, bro. You, you can't do everything in post. But it was funny that whatever he said, and he, I mean, man of few words, but, you know, those few words, when they were spoken, they knew exactly what they what he wanted from them. Mm -hmm. And every time Lottie had to go somewhere, like it seemed like Van was chasing her around the studio. And every time she gets to one location, they sweeping Lottie off somewhere else. And as a parent, I can't imagine how frustrating that is. Uh, and the fact that we don't need, like we know the um the commentary surrounding children in entertainment mm -hmm. right. and how they can be so easily manipulated and abused. And a lot of the child stars grow up to be some, you know, damaged adults. Mm -hmm. We've seen it time and time again. Macaulay Clark and the, the Olsen twins. We've seen it with uh, Miley Cyrus at one point. You know, so it's like it's a known thing that happens with a lot of these child actors. Well, I, I'm glad they didn't show Van in that process of um, allowing it because she didn't. Allow, she 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 wasn't up for that at all. And mm -hmm. and to be quite afraid. But uh, what was the uh, grandma that, um oh the older woman that was there she's kind of asking van if she was a christian and van's okay. like i'm spiritual but she's right. like basically saying the bible verse whoever uh doesn't receive the kingdom of god like a child right. won't enter it and mm -hmm. so um I, I think that that was kind of talking about uh people that aren't open to the joys of children they don't get to experience true happiness right. and so she was kind of like a mother figure on the um set it seemed like and she even helped van to get access to mr chocolate's uh building because she boss up and, and pull out that for that, <laughs> yes that, uh, that uh gun and shoots the dude in the what's in the foot or ankle or something i'm mm -hmm. like she, she's a mother yep you know, the thing that was interesting to me is that once Van got Lottie and was taking her out of here, Lottie didn't want to go. Lottie yeah. was like carrying on and stuff. And that made me wonder that when we saw them in episode seven at the campground and Lottie was in the funk, I was like, is Lottie still in the funk because she didn't get to stay and keep working on the movie? Or, mm. or was it just 
her going camping just was not her idea of, you know, she a birthday was, trip. To me, she was just a typical child. You know, she's having fun at the studio. She's doing something she's never done before. And for her, it was just fun. She doesn't understand the implications or the ramifications of that, of the seriousness of what she was doing. Because if Van had allowed it, she would have, Van may, ne may never have seen her again. And think so, about the scenes that they were putting her in. First, she went from one scene yeah. to about 14 scenes. Yeah. Then they added her to um one where she was the daughter of a crackhead and the mom sitting there eating a crack sandwich. And it's just like material that is super inappropriate right. for a child. Right. And so, like I said, it kind of goes to show how children can get caught up into these Exploited. situations that they're not prepared for. And, and then and, God Van is there as a responsible adult right. trying to navigate her through that situation because some children don't have that. And Mr. Chocolate wanted to snatch her. Right. <laughs> so, yeah. And so I was just like, you know, it, it says a lot about the entertainment industry. Um, and then at the end, when Van talked to Lottie, I kind of liked the way she explained it to her um, because she was like, I know you like this, and I don't necessarily want to stifle your creativity and your interest or whatever, but I don't think you're ready for this. Um, and so, she kind of apologized for how things had gone down while she was um there. And and you know, Mr. Chocolate had offered Lottie six seasons of a show. So it could have been massively <laughs> successful. <laughs> but I do appreciate their integrity for, mm -hmm. you know, having some morals and saying, like, no, nah, this might not be uh for us. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. So I, I enjoyed the episode and I wonder how Tyler Perry felt after watching this. I could pay to be a fly on the wall while he was watching this episode. <laughs> like I said, they are ruffling some feathers. Right, right. But it's parody, it's satire. So uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> and I do wonder, you know, I, I'm sure that Earn, I'm sorry, not Earn, but Donald Glover and Tyler Perry have probably had some run-ins before and so i wonder what their personal relationship is like in real life if they have one at all hmm. well, so like tyler, tyler has one of the largest studios in hollywood and mm -hmm. studio in atlanta right and i mean the That's fact that hard. um he has accomplished so much in you know owning his studio and creating opportunity for a lot of black uh people both on scene, um, in front of the camera and behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. um, it, it says a lot. And, you know, I don't want to diminish anything that he's accomplished. But this uh, series was kind of funny, too, how they were kind of talking about how some of the scripts are written and, you know, how Tyler Perry, can, I don't know that he has a lot of uh, other people writing with him. I know for a long time he was developing the majority of this stuff on his own. And mm -hmm. people had some critique about that. Like mm -hmm. maybe you could use some assistance. Maybe in a, it was always a commentary on the writing, how it was done on the wigs and how they were done. <laughs> They're like, I you could. know, you got to hire a better person to do the wigs. You can <laughs> well, you know, see that these are wigs. In the I, <laughs> I thought Donald Glover was actually um, bringing to light some of the things that most you know people have started to say about Tyler Perry in his movies. Because we saw the studio like Tyler Perry like uh, they when you look at the show itself that, that Mr. Chocolate was into, it was crazy stupid. Uh, not to say that Tyler has crazy stupid shows, but you know there have been some discussions about Tyler Perry and some of the some of his. Well, shows. you can see oh, that wow. at the end scene when Van went to confront him, and he's kind of like saying he owns the police, and then Van right. threatens uh, to. To, uh, she throws the hot grits in his face. You know, he did that in one of his plays. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's kind of like, <laughs> it's, I don't even want to say it's not well done, but it's kind of some things that are uh, over the top. It's a lot of over the top. Mm -hmm. yeah. stuff that yeah. That's a word I've heard a lot <laughs> pertaining to him, over the top. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so... I, I like I said, I don't want to take anything away from Tyler Perry, mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. having somebody as a sounding board and having additional writers in there and, and people that can help you develop your ideas. Um, and it, it's nothing wrong with that, essentially, is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. So, 
Um, I did enjoy the episode though. <laughs> I really did. It was hilarious. And I thought that um it was interesting to see a, a van episode by herself Marcy. finally. Mm-hmm. And also she seemed like she was really feeling that dude um that was kind of escorting her around and he seemed like he might have been kind of an opportunist a little bit trying to get on with her, but well, I mean, kind you of know. left that note with her when she got home. She seen the note that he had with his phone number and uh, let's have sex in the boiler room. <laughs> well, you know, I was like, Van was I, showing interest, so you know, mm-hmm. dude was a he was a Mr. Tool guy, just got out of jail not too long ago. But Van didn't seem to care much about that, which, in some respects, I was glad to see that she wasn't, mm-hmm. you know, yeah, she, she wasn't, you know, uh, dissing him because of what he mm-hmm. does. So she kind of played up on that. But I like this episode because it did tell me about Van and all the things I thought previously about Van between episode seven and eight, I, I had a new outlook on. Oh, yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I mean, judging from the beginning of the season, how Van was, I knew that Van was different. I mean, you know, mm-hmm. I, I, I didn't think that other than what happened with her with the depression and the mental health thing, I did not. Um, think that Van was, you know, a terrible person or whatever like that. I, I'm just glad that she and Ern are figuring things out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because that the guy Shamik that she met had me worried that she might be pursuing a new love interest. So yeah. I was glad to see a few episodes later that her and Ern had reconciled. Yeah. So um, I'm I'm really liking where things are headed. I know we only have maybe like I think two more episodes left. Um, uh, yeah, and, no. and that's it for no. forever. <laughs> So it's going to be really interesting to see where they leave us when all things are said and done. And I think the person that I can lead, like that's least predictable, obviously, is Darius. Nobody Darius. knows what Darius is going to end up at the end of this. Mm. Darius is so out there. He might be um, goofy. He might be too honest. He's a bad genius. Yeah. I'm telling you, because oh, every true. once in a while, he comes out the blue with something very profound. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You took that out of my head, right out of my head. What I like, though, is has there been any discussion as to where Donald Glover may be headed uh, after this? Because um, I I just can't see him going away. I'd love to know what's next on his plate. Of course not. Like, he's been involved in Star Wars. I mean, you know, you know his background. He's a writer. He used to write for, uh, um, uh, what's the show with him? Tina, what's the face? Because he was like the youngest writer on on this show. Um, Tina Face. So like even SNL and things like that. Like mm-hmm. he he was like one of the youngest writers. So he he's been a creator for a long time and at a young age. Yeah. So mm-hmm. he, he, it's but you I mean, know the commentary that he's offering through the show about the entertainment industry and the music industry, I'm wondering if he's sick of it. <laughs> you know, it seems like it's not uh very he doesn't speak or think highly of that industry so well, i wonder if he's kind of like uh, it's going to take a break or whether he's going to focus on oh. one more than the other and that's and he, where, and, he, and he has a family now he has three children but that's where kind of i where i was headed because you know with with uh atlanta season four he broke out a lot of things and so does it blacklist him you know, I mean, will he be? Oh, no, no. Oh, yes. I'd love to see or know what he comes up with next because, to me, I don't know how you beat season four. Uh, if we were to see a season five, I know it wouldn't be, but if we were to see one, I don't know how he comes up with anything. Thirty Rock. That's what he used to write. Mm-hmm. Thirty Rock. I couldn't. Yeah, he he used to write for Thirty Rock. Okay. Which was a huge show. So, mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I I love his work, and there aren't very many people like him that tell right. that will tell the truth right in right up front like that. So, and he does it in such a funny way. It's you know, I'd love to see more. Yeah, I would too. I would love to hear some more music from him too, because okay. we know he I had know. a lot to say with "In This Is America" and uh, what's the other song? Stay woke. <laughs> So, you know, he's a very good artist, too. So I wouldn't be mad if he put out some music. I don't know, but didn't you say he was um, I mean, that can change because people retire and unretire all the time. Oh, right. But so, but I thought at one point he had retired 
I'm just saying, I wouldn't be mad. I wouldn't be, be mad at all. No, I wouldn't be mad. Yeah, so I enjoyed this. I'm waiting to see what these next two episodes have in store for us. Definitely looking forward to it. Um, I'm not even going to try to predict <laughs> what could nope. happen. There's no, no way <laughs> you can nope. predict anything in the show. We don't know whether episode nine is going to be another standalone episode or whether we're going to go back to the main cast. <laughs> But um, all I can say is I know that these last two episodes, they'll probably make sure that we are left in a place where we're satisfied with how it ends. Mm -hmm. So looking mm -hmm. forward to seeing that. Um, you guys have anything else you want to add before we close out? All I got to say is Darius, Darius for mayor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know if I want Darius as my mayor. <laughs> City <laughs> might be on fire. <laughs> It'll be full of smoke. You know, kind of, that's kind of, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, and Darius from Marion, and he left paper boy in the middle of the street. Oh, sure. I didn't mean to ask him. <laughs> Hi. Exactly. So I'm like, no, no. <laughs> hey, look, you know, Atlanta would be on fire for sure. Mm -mm. Well, um, I think we had a very lively discussion today. I'm glad we finally got around to recapping these um, latest few episodes because they truly are well done. So Congratulations to all involved for keeping us on our toes and, and keeping us interested and also just sparking conversation around important topics. Um, so we do want to give kudos to all involved with the show. And um, also, please make sure that you are subscribed to our show. Click that subscribe button right now. Show um, some support for us by also liking the video. That would be really great. And the notification bell that is there um, as well so that you can get alerted every time we post. We are going to be recapping a bunch of different shows. Um, I know one that a lot, a lot of people have been suggesting for us, Reasonable Doubt, that is on Hulu. That's another really well done show. So uh, we, we might go ahead and recap that one too. And um, as we start reaching out to talent, you never know who we might have as a guest on our show. So you definitely don't want to miss that. So please make sure you are subscribed. Follow us on our social media accounts as well. We are at The Spot Real Talk on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, TikTok, everywhere. So uh, follow us there as well to keep up with us. And uh, I think on that note, we are going to call it a night and we'll see you guys next time. Bye. I need all the wins. Yeah. yeah. Ain't no L's. I gotta get a no call and quits. Yeah. yeah. Gotta keep on moving no matter how hard it gets. Yeah. yeah. Better move out the way cause I'm coming with harder hits. My head is as hard as a brick but I'm harder than all it is. You. Yeah. Better move. You might get knocked out. Some days I don't hit, I don't sleep. When I'm focused, I'm dying, just down, wonder when I'm angry.